Well, good morning to you, and uh, welcome to this day's broadcast uh, church uh, service from the home. And uh, I think that's what's happening in your home these days. Uh, the doors of church remain to be clo remain remain closed, but the church remains active. And uh, we're very happy that um, you be able to, to you are able to join us today through these uh, new um, sources or this new platform that we are using. So um, some of you are still getting a little familiarized with uh, this new platform that is available now. And uh, I just want to welcome you to, to this new platform. It's called Online Church. And as you navigate around your screen, you will see that there are different options there. There's a Bible section where you can um, search up the Bible passage that we'll be sharing this morning. And you also have the opportunity to chat. Um, some of our ministry leaders are ready to chat with you if you have any questions or if you have a special pr uh, prayer request, you can uh, select the private prayer uh, section there and one of our ministry leaders will be um, sharing a time of prayer with you. So welcome again into um, my home, which is your home. And uh, the reason why we do this is because, uh, you know, we want to connect with you. We want to connect with your settings. Um, you find yourself at home most likely right now um, with your family and uh, enjoying a, a nice Sunday morning. Uh, most of you by this time already had your nice breakfast, perhaps are enjoying your second cup of coffee. But um, you know what? As we jump into what, what we have planned for today, would you join me in prayer as we present uh, this time in, in, in the Lord's hands? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you are doing here in in. <laughs> in our city, 
in our state, in our country, what you are doing around the world, Father. We are very thankful because we know that you are speaking into our lives. We know that there is something that you want to teach us. So we just pray, Lord, that our ears be open, that our hearts may be able to perceive and to receive what you have for us, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for uh, your love and your grace that we can experience during this time, Father. Lord, to you be all the glory. To you be all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before I introduce um, our, my guest for this morning, I want to um, thank you for those who, uh, to those who have uh, answered those phone calls. We've been calling the ministry leaders and myself to uh, maintain that communication with you, that, that relationship. We can't see each other on Sundays, which I miss so much. Honestly, uh, this is our second Sunday away from each other. And, um, you know, so what we can do is connect through this media, uh, these sources, and also through uh, phone calls. I had wonderful conversations with many of you, and the ministry leaders have also reported back to me that, you know, some very meaningful conversations went, went, um, went through, and I know that God is doing something in our lives. And... Uh, you know, this morning, we're very blessed to have one of our um, ministry leaders here with us. And I am um, talking to, I'm talking about Elisa, Elisa Marinero. <laughs> Welcome, Elisa. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. It's so good to, to have you here. Um, you know, it's uh, wonderful to see what God is uh, doing. Uh, you know, many times we, we ask ourselves, what good can come out of this? You know, when we go through different uh, stages in life, perhaps, you know, valleys of darkness, of fear, of, of situations that are unexpected, you know, and, and we ask ourselves, what good can come out of this? But the reality is that that's how God works. He uses these things uh, to do something amazing. The Word says that He makes beauty out of ashes. And, um, you know, it is one you know, it is one uh, what you are doing uh, for the Lord, for for the kingdom of heaven, for the ministry, and for the community during this time. Um, I'm excited about these opportunities that we have to, to receive and to welcome these uh, guests to our, to our broadcast because I think it's an opportunity for, you know, for um, the church family to, to get to know, you know our, their leaders a little bit more. And um, Elisa, you know, I, I <laughs> have known you for many years. Uh, as a matter of fact, you and my wife grew up together, have been friends for a very long time. Um, and, uh, you know, so I, I know you more at a, at a personal level. But, you know, some, like I said, some of the people from our congregation perhaps, you know, see you at church and you greet them, have a small conversation with them. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, you know, I know that uh, you come from a, a, uh, a, a background of of Central American uh, <laughs> heritage, which is very similar to me. Tell us a little bit about, about yourself, Elisa. Yeah, so, um, well, first of all, thank you for having me here. Yeah. It really is yeah. an honor. Um, but yes, I, I was born in El Salvador, little country in Central America. We're neighbors with Guatemala. Yeah. And um, tiny little country. Um, and I was born there in 1985. <laughs> you can estimate how old yeah, I am. Yeah, you do the math. <laughs> but um, I came here to the United States when I was four years old, uh, along with my brother Armando, um, which you guys met um, last Sunday. Yeah. And we both came here, and my mom was ready here, and we we were raised here. We were pretty much raised here. Um, um, you know, it was good. You know, we, we, we grew up good. Um, things started changing a little bit in our family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are, grew up in a dysfunctional family. Um, you know, I, I, I look back and, and I don't look back and I say, oh, poor me, why did I go through those tough times? But uh, as a matter of fact, I, I tell God, you know, thank you for bringing me to this country because I could have still been in El Salvador, but God wanted me here for a greater purpose. 
and now I see it, you know, and I thank God for those, like you were men mentioning earlier, like those dark valleys, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, our, um, I mean, in our family, there was, a, you know, domestic violence, abuse, you know, but we were able to get through it, through those challenging moments because, because of the Lord, you know, my grandma, um, she instilled the word of God in our heart. She taught me how wow. to pray. And her example, she she loved singing, so she would have me write out her her hymns, her old hymns, nice. and in a notebook. So every time I would write the hymns, like I, I now to look back, it was doing something in in, in my faith and in, in, in my in my heart. So um, yeah, so I mean, I I truly believe that it was the Lord strengthening me and getting me through those dark valleys. Right. So that's that's. A little bit of my, my background, I grew up in, here in Oxnard. All of my life I've been here, um, and at a very young age, I, I started serving the Lord. You know, I, I started at Oxnard Church in Oxnard. Yeah. That was the first church I ever stepped into. I was five, and, um, you know, we were there for several years, going with my grandma. They would pick us up in a little bus, and when mm -hmm. my parents couldn't go, um, they would pick me and my brother up and grew up there, became part of the, the, the worship team, and I would go to youth group, and <laughs> you know, and then eventually I, I ended up, you know, meeting my, my good friend, Jabal, and she, her and her family really helped me to get mm -hmm. through some tough moments, right, and I thank the Lord for, for her life and her sister, and, but, you know, in high school, I, I started getting a desire of, of wanting to pursue a higher education, mm -hmm. of wanting to go to school. Uh, out of nowhere, I just, I just was so determined. I'm going to go to university. You know, I, I wanted to go to Pepperdine. I didn't go to Pepperdine, <laughs> but um, I was like, I want to go to Pepperdine one day. You know, I just knew that I wanted to get a higher education and just that desire and you know, I, I, I struggled a little bit because I struggled. It was hard, um, but I, I did. I, I was able to, 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 to graduate from Castle Channel Islands with the grace of God. Mm -hmm. um, it was challenging and because I had to work two jobs and, and go to school and sometimes had to catch the bus. And But, um, yeah. you know, it, I truly believe that God was putting that desire in my heart to go to school to equip me for a time, a time such as this, wow. you know? Yeah, yeah and, and that's wonderful uh, that you mentioned that because uh, I'm sure there are a lot of young people and, um, you know, I can think of some young moms mm -hmm. that are, you know, going through that, that moment of, of, of trying to, um, you know, advance in their education, but mm -hmm. they have a lot of different responsibilities and, and uh, you say that, you know, it was, it was hard and, and that's mm -hmm. the reality, right? Mm -hmm. to, for many people, you know, that yeah. are, that are pursuing. So I think when we, you know, hear your story, it is very encouraging to those, mm -hmm. those young people who are on the same, on the same, um, you know, on the same situation in the same situation with, with you, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so as we, um, you know, look at what, what, uh, you know, the things that, that God has led you into um, and the preparation that you had for, for you know, your education. Um, as, as long as I've known you, you've always had a heart of service. You've desired to, to help, to help, um, you know, people in need. So tell us how that desire in your heart led you to choosing the, the career that, that, you, that you went for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, again, I... I that desire of, of serve of serving others it, it's a gift from God. It really is. A, it really is a gift from God. And I, I think what what led me to to choose my career was, you know, seeing how so many people helped me and my family. Um, you know that the those times of struggle is what created that desire in my heart. That I wanted it share hope with other people and so um you know god started preparing me and i ended up working uh, i'm still working there at a clinic in in, mm -hmm. in south oxnard in the south area of oxnard and i you know started meeting all you know, a lot of people through the clinic listening to their stories or different needs from from the south area of oxnard and so i 
I was like, wow, like I can relate to you. I, I've, I've gone through this, you know, I, I know where you're coming from. And so, you know, just, just like, I know that a lot of people in the South area of Oxnard have, have, you know, come from dysfunctional families, you know, that have low income to no income. And, you know, so like I, now that I'm at Oxnard Church, I have a better understanding of, of what our population is like. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So your your preparation at school and your experience at work has uh, pretty much equipped you, right, to mm -hmm. for for the ministry that that you're doing at church now. Can you share with with uh, with the church and with the with the people listening what what it is that that you do at church? What what is the ministry that you that you lead at church? Yeah. So um, at church, I'm I'm part of a, like a branch of the outreach mm -hmm. team. Um, but what I do at church is I, I meet people from the community. Individuals come to church, right? They, they come, they come and, and they might hear the message, you know, just like, for example, someone goes to the, to the hospital, to a doctor's office, right? They, they go see the doctor, but when they're talking to the doctor, this person has many other needs. So the same thing at church, you know, they come to church, but these people, um, they have a need for God, first of all, right? And second, they have so many other needs, financial needs. Um, you know, they, they need uh, um, assistance with paying their bills. Maybe they, they need a, a listening ear. Maybe they need counseling. You know, so we're not only, what I do is that I'm, I, I um, assist them and I assess their needs. And based on their needs, I connect them to the, to the different services out in the community. Mm. Um, so, and a lot, of, a lot of the times when we're talking with these, with the individuals, they're telling me about their problems and it's, it's very, it's, it's a huge blessing that you're also able to, you know, share um, hope and even the gospel with them while you're trying to help them, right? right? right so right, it's, right. it's like a whole, it's like a whole person care, you're, 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 you're caring for the person as a whole, right? right? So the spiritual aspect, you right. know, their their physical aspect, their, you know, we even go through, we talk about even about nutrition, nutrition right? Yeah, so absolutely. like, you know, some, some um, people feel depressed, right? Like I feel so depressed and so sad and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of started talking about, okay, well, what is it that you're eating, you know? And I'm like, well, I need a lot of sugary stuff and a lot of starch. And I'm like, well, right. maybe that's what's making you feel a little, like, you know, mm -hmm. down. And, you know, again, I always say consult with your doctor. But, you know, um, yeah. you know, we go over different things. As, as a, a, a human, is, we need to see them as, as a whole. They have different needs, right? Right, right, right. And, and your ministry is a huge blessing to the church uh, and, and um, you know, to the community, I should say. Uh, but also to the church because it's equipping the church with different tools to help the people. Uh, personally, you know, I have I have seen what you're doing, and it's such a such a gift from God for my life to support the ministry that we're doing there at at the church. Many people come into church, they uh, express you know their their spiritual need. You know they uh, you know they they are led to to you know a time of prayer. And many of them, you know, receive the Lord in their lives, and, and you know, but um, you know, they start expressing other needs that they have, you know, where many times as a church or as a pastor, you know, I, I don't know what else or how else to help them with different resources, but it is a great blessing to to have you, where you know, I can say, okay. You know, I will hand you off now to to this branch of mm -hmm. our ministry that can help you and direct you to the right resources. So, you know, um, we wanted to take this time and talk a little bit about what Elisa does, uh, because you might be someone who is, uh, you know, looking for for help, searching for help, or you might know someone that that needs help and the different resources that are available uh, in the community, the county, the state. Um, sometimes are very, um, very hard to find, and most of the time it's because people are, aren't aware, right, that there is that help out there. So um, whatever your your need may be, you know, um, you can reach out to Elisa and uh, you know and uh, have a conversation with her. And Elisa, I'm gonna give the the church office number so people can contact you. Uh, they're gonna contact you at. 
805-483-7046. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it a little bit, a uh, couple more times, and you'll probably find the link with that information on the, on the, on the website on this live broadcast, 805-483-7046. And you can also email us at aid, uh, oxnardnas at gmail.com, oxnardnas at gmail. Dot com. It is wonderful to see how the Church of Christ can can be doing doing the work, doing the work of reaching, um, you know, in, in many different ways. And you know, having a conversation with Elisa and with Armando, who is the uh, outreach director. Uh, you know, now that we can't meet at church, now that we don't have the ability uh, to open the doors of the church. You know, we have these opportunities doing outreach to, to, uh, to, uh, to share, um, you know, the, the good news, the hope in, in Jesus Christ uh, regarding, um, you know, salvation, which is the most important thing. And, um, you know, God has been speaking to, to our lives. And, um, you know, one of the questions that I've been asking our guests uh, that have been joining us is, um, how has God been speaking to you? And Elisa, I, I want to ask you the same question. I know God is speaking. He's showing us. He's showing you something during these times. Can, can, you, can you share a little bit about what God has been teaching you these days? Yes. Um, God has been teaching me a lot of things mm -hmm. lately. Um, you know, the, I remember the, the first couple of days when all of this happened, I was very heartbroken. You know, I was like, oh, I'm not going to be at church anymore. And mm. just very heartbroken, you know, and very uneasy. I, I, I didn't feel at peace at all. And but I remember um, I was in bed one night, one of those days, and uh, really God was just saying, you know, at least I, you, you are the church. Like, you, mm. you are the church. Like, it's going to be a little bit different, you know, but everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay because I felt I was already kind of trying to, to like, um, I was going to into the future, like, oh my God, this is going to happen. And, and my mind was just going mm. all over the place. So God was like, no, like, focus on the now, you know, everything's going to be okay. So you are the church. Just use what I, I've given you. Wow. You've already equipped and apply it, right? Just apply it. So definitely... Um, that's one of the things, you know, God was saying, like, you, you are the church, you know, second, it was slow down a little, you know, mm. so slow down a little. Um, um, sometimes, you know, for me personally, like I, I like to participate in a lot of things <laughs> and that's just how the way I'm, I'm built, you know, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. if we don't have a good balance or healthy boundaries, we might um, miss the blessing. We might, I, I felt like God was saying, you're going to miss it if you're just like, you know, doing too much, you know, because sometimes when we're doing a lot, we feel like, oh, I feel accomplished, right? Mm. But um, God was saying, you know, just slow down, do what I'm asking you to do, you know, and that is just serve the community, just, just, just serve, you know, and rest, you know, take it easy, just rest and, um, and spend time and, and prayer and, and my word. Mm. Um, I wanted to, one of the verses that um, came to my mind um, is found in Romans 12, 2, and it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. You know, I feel like, you know, God was saying, don't conform to this pattern that likes to get busy all the mm, time yeah. and up and down, you know, don't, don't follow that pattern, right? But it says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let your mind be renewed through through my word. And I really like this, the second part of this Bible verses. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. And God's will is good, pleasing, and perfect. You know, so I, you know, like God was, has been saying, like, you want to know what God's, what my will is for your life? Then seek me, you know, mm. renew your mind. Because his will is good, it's pleasing. And, and that's such a, such a, um, relevant verse you know for these times mm -hmm. right um to not or well, not to co or to not conform to the pattern of this world mm -hmm. and that's something that's been happening mm -hmm. these you know these days with uh you know with the lockdown with the quarantine mm -hmm. and you know the fear of the of the virus 
uh, our patterns are being put on hold. Yeah. You know, we just fall into patterns. Society, culture, you know, has these patterns. And, and I think everyone has been, all, every one of those patterns has been put on hold yeah, stopped. and <laughs> stop. And, and uh, you know, it's a time that God is allowing uh, for his church to, to reset, mm -hmm. right, for the believers. Again, uh, when we talk about church, we, we got to remember, and this is, I think, one of the main things that God wants us to think about and to realize during these these days that, you know, we don't know how long it will be. You know, this is our second Sunday that we're not gathering at the, you know, at the church building. Um, we don't know how long it will be. Mm -hmm. You know, we are all hoping that by, you know, April 12th, you know, we can gather again and have our wonderful Resurrection yeah. Sunday uh, gathering. But if we don't, you know, that is also God's will, yes. right? That's, that, that's and okay. that's okay. We have to be able to accept God's will. And, you know, that, so the big message, I think, with this and what you shared is that the church is not the building. Mm -hmm. It's not that place where we gather um, we are the church as individuals, like God told you, you know, you are the church. Mm -hmm. You know, I am the church. If each one of the believers, each one of the Christians, you are the church. You are your family. Your home is an extension. Um, the word of God says that we are ambassadors of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So wherever we go, we carry the embassy with yeah. us. You know, we, exactly. You know, and we come in as Establish the embassy. This is the representation of the kingdom of heaven. And, you know, I think that is a, a wonderful, wonderful lesson that God's been speaking to, yeah. to everyone's lives. And, you know, um, I, I just encourage you, I encourage everyone, Elisa, to, to pay attention, for our ears to be open and our hearts to be sensitive to what it is that God wants to teach us. He wants to teach us something. Um, we don't want to go back to normal, you know, um, uh, we don't want things to go back to the way they were, you know. Um, I think there, this is a time for change. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity to, uh, to examine ourselves, get rid of certain things that are, that are uh, not right, that are wrong, yeah. habits, um, ideologies, like we were talking earlier, uh, that, that we have just fallen into pattern. We have fallen into routine. Um, and God is giving us this opportunity to stop and think about it. And there are three different areas that I, you know, that I was sharing with, with Elisa before we went uh, on the air of, you know, that, that God is, wants to speak to us, first of all, at an individual level, Elisa. Um, I think this is a time where we can reflect on our trust. Are we trusting God? You know, He allows these tests, you know, to... to um, to help us understand where our heart is. Are we trusting God or are we trusting the economy? Hmm. Are we trusting his provision or are we trusting in our own provision and our right. own ability to produce? Right. Now, um, you know, that, that's, that's a very, very big one. Um, something that's difficult. Our faith, you know, he, he's, he's testing our faith. Mm -hmm. Not only our faith as in, you know, trusting that God will, will provide, but also our faith as uh, as Christians, as as believers, um, you know that we have called ourselves, and profess, you know this title of Christians, followers of Christ. You know, is it only when we go to church? Hmm. Is it only when we're surrounded by our fellow brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. You know, is our faith real? Yeah. You know, what we profess, the faith that we profess, is it real? in the privacy of our home, when we don't have our brothers and sisters around us, when we don't have the pastor, you know, on the, on the, on the platform preaching, when we don't have the worship team leading us, you know, in right. these wonderful times, you know, is, is our faith real? And I think as individuals, also another area of our lives that is being tested is our character, mm -hmm. our character. Um, how real are we? Mm -hmm. You know, um, have we, you know, learned a pattern or have we learned a certain lifestyle that is just an image mm. or a facade, you right. know, um, you know, that, that we portray outside mm -hmm. our home, mm -hmm. you know, when we're in our home, when we're in the comfort of being surrounded by the people 
that that uh, that we're so used to having our, our you know our wife, my wife, or uh, you know your husband, your uh, your children. You kind of just let down your guard and you know be you be yourself, <laughs> yeah. you know. But it's in those times when you're just yourself that that you can realize that you can reflect on your character, on your personal uh, personal um, being, mm -hmm. you know, and where you are. Another area where I think God is speaking to us is in um, in the family setting, yeah. you know, um, our core principles, yeah. you know, our core principles, again, you know, things that we say when we're in public, you know, things that we agree upon when we're at church, mm -hmm. you know, when a pastor says something, you know, everybody says, amen, you know, and one of those things might be like family is, you know, is the, the core of, of, you know, of a healthy church, of a healthy community, of a healthy nation. Mm -hmm. You know, it all begins in the home and everybody says, amen, you know, but, you know, we don't have, you know, the support or we don't have the, uh, the, the what can I going to say, we're not surrounded by the rest of the families of church and you just find yourself, you know, by yourself with your little family or big family, you know, and you start asking yourselves, you know, are my core principles or my core values um, real? Yeah. You know, or is it just something that, that I say, you know, habits, habits that we might have as a family? Yeah. Um, or are there some habits that we have to adopt? And one of the things that's really important is, uh, you know, the, the, the devotional time, seeking God together. Last Sunday, we had Navi here in the uh, Spanish broadcast. She was talking about worship, right? Mm -hmm. How we can continue to worship at home. We don't need the worship team. We're so blessed with the musicians we have at church. But what, what about when they're not there? You know, can we worship as a family? Can we worship at home? God is, God is definitely speaking. He's definitely trying yes. for us to realize. And the last uh, area where I think God is speaking to us is at the church level. Mm -hmm. At the church. And I'm not just talking about our church, you know, Oxnard Church of the Nazarene, or not only the church here in the community, in the county, but I'm just talking in, about the church in general. You know, we have fallen into some I ideologies. Uh, we have fallen into such patterns also, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, that I feel like this is a, 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 uh, a, a reset time. Like God is pushing the reset button, you know, and he's holding it until we reset back to, to factory settings, <laughs> you, know, you know, to manufacturing settings. You know, when, when we mess things up, you know, I tend to do that with electronics. Sometimes I do too much and I change the settings and then it just becomes, ah, overwhelming. <laughs> what do we do, Mario? We just, okay, reset, you know, <laughs> let's start all over, clear. And this is, you know, how the designer indicated, you know, for it to start. I feel like God is doing that with the church. He's pushing the reset button. Why? Because we've changed the setting so much. We have focused on things that are, that are you know, petty. You know, things that are that are not of value. You know, um, you know, we focus so much on what happens inside the church. We've had like a like an internal you know uh, perspective when, when you know. God told his disciples, go, go, send out, you know, don't stay inside. We have to have an outward perspective. That's just one of the areas, right. you know, but, uh, you know, we have focused on things that, and I think this time, you know, God is allowing during this time for us to, to realize what our identity is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we discover our, our identity, excuse me, when we find our, the mission, when we remind ourselves of the mission that God has, has given us and what we've been called to do, you know, um, our identity is set, is made mm. clear. Yeah. You know, what is the mission of the church? Well, I immediately go to the Great Commission, Elisa, you know, yeah. to go, 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 you know, and uh, that creates our identity. You know, the other thing is that we have focused so much on the church building and the church gathering mm -hmm. that we become dependent on it, mm -hmm. you know, and as Christians, we have to be Able, we have to realize that we can seek God wherever we are, exactly. that we can seek God as a family, right. that we can have those times, those meaningful times, yeah. studying the word of God together as a family and, you know, strengthening our relationship with the Lord. It yeah. doesn't just happen, you know, at church. Exactly. It can happen at home, you know, yeah. and the function. What is the function of the church? What is the purpose of the church? 
So, you know, God is speaking. God is definitely speaking. And I encourage you to see what, what God is um, trying to tell you at an individual level, as, as a family, and as a church. Mm-hmm. Big reset button. Reset. Yes. God, show us. Show us what you want to do. We've been going through a very interesting series, um, Elisa, during the past uh, few months. Uh, we've been talking about the, the parables of Jesus Christ. And, um, you know, uh, there are no, no coincidences. There are no surprises. This whole thing, you know, the coronavirus and the lockdown and all this, it was no surprise for God. You know, it, this did, did not catch him by surprise, Mario. I mean, uh, you know, he, God didn't say, whoa, where did this come from? You know, <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. No, no, no. He, he knew exactly what was going to happen, when it was going to happen, and what everyone was going to be doing while it happened and what we are doing now. Um, so nothing's a coincidence. You know, we've been teaching about the parables of Jesus Christ, and we are leading um, into the final group of parables, mm-hmm. which talk a lot about... Uh, the second coming wow. of Jesus Christ, his, his return. Uh, the following chapters, uh, I mean, I just want to encourage you to, to stay tuned and don't miss any one of these, um, you know, teachings. Uh, talk a lot about, about you know, the, the coming of the Lord. And we've been, been talking about a conversation that Jesus had with his disciples in chapter 21 and chapter 22 of the book of Matthew. If you want to open up your Bibles, we'll be going through that a little bit. And again, I remind you, with this new platform that we have, there's a little uh, tab in the bottom that says Bible. You can click on it and you can search up um, these Bible passages. Matthew chapter 22. Um, but in chapter 21, we, be, we see that there was a, a dialogue that began between Jesus and the Pharisees. Again, constant, constant uh, battle. <laughs> um, the Pharisees would always uh, question Jesus, trying to, to um, make him stumble in his teachings, try to make him uh, look bad in front of the other people. And why were they doing that? Because of their self-righteousness. They had an image that they had to portray. And Jesus came and he shook things up. You know, uh, before Jesus came, John the Baptist came and he shook things up. And the, uh, the conversation between Jesus and the Pharisees began um, because of, of, a, of a, um, a conflict that was going on, uh, that they were questioning him, who gave you the authority to do all these things, the things that you are doing? And uh, they began to talk about John the Baptist. So these, these three parables... Um, that we've been going through. This one for today is the third, a third of the three. The last of the three, um, you know, is about the uh, the uh, the self righteousness of the Pharisees, mm-hmm. and how again God sees the heart, and He has witnessed their uh, hypocrisy. You mm-hmm. know, so it's pointing out their their hypocrisy and their position, you know, in the relationship with. God. So let me read uh, Matthew chapter 22, and I'm going to read a few verses here from verse 14, excuse me, verse 1 and on to verse 14. And this is the parable of the wedding, of the wedding banquet. This is what it says. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to let them know to come. But they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and the fattened cattle have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized the servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent an army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out to the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guest, he noticed the man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here 
without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, Tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be, a, the, be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then he concludes this parable by saying, Many are invited, but few are chosen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And Lord, we put these minutes in your hands, Father, that you may speak to our hearts. Lord, teach us. Teach us, Father. You are the great teacher. You are the rabbi. And we pray, Lord, for your guidance as we study your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we find here a story, uh, a parable that Jesus presents. And again, um, when we talk about parables, at least uh, um, in the past we have thought, or at least I have thought that parables were stories to help understand a point that Jesus was making. Mm -hmm. But in reality, we, we see that Jesus was using parables to hide mm -hmm. truth from a certain group of people. But for another group of people, it was a revelation of something great. Mm -hmm. um, so he was trying to hide, you know, that, that message um, to the, for the Pharisees, you know, and this is such a such a deep and profound and eternal teaching that mm -hmm. Jesus is presenting here to 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 the people. And um, he talks about a king who sent out invitation. Uh, he sent out invitations to his guest. So um, to receive an invitation from a king, um, you know, that, that's that's a big deal. You know, um, you have to be someone very special, <laughs> someone very important to be uh, invited by the king. It wasn't just any person. And um, we find, you know, as Jesus tells the parable, that the that the initial reaction, um, the uh, the it was rejection. They rejected the initial invitation. Back in the days uh, when there was a banquet, a wedding, when, and there was a wedding that you know mm -hmm. the parable is about, they would send out two invitations. They would send out an invitation, uh, almost as something as we as we are used to nowadays, uh, a save the date, or an RSVP. Um, they would send that out, you know, to inform all their guests. You know, this is what's happening. This is the date, and then right before um, the banquet started, they would send out the, the 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 servants or the messengers to tell them as a reminder, hey, it's ready. You know, so so come. So you know, he sent out the first message, the the save the date. You know, for example, and they rejected. They're like, nah, we don't care. You know, like we have no interest in this. Um, you know, rejecting an invitation from a king, uh, most likely to the palace, right? Uh, most likely really good food, really good environment, you know, but they rejected that invitation. The second time, you know, right before, you know, everything was going to start, because it says that, you know, it was ready to go. He sent, you know, the group of messengers again, and their reaction was, was even worse this time, right? They, um, they just ignored them, and they mistreated them. Perhaps, you know, they pushed them around or, or, you know, just called them names. And, you know, they went off. This says here in the Bible that they went off into their, to do their business. They went and did what, what they wanted to do. Um, but some even killed the messengers. You know, and to, and to uh, kill a messenger or to mistreat a messenger um, was a very, a very big offense to, to the king or the person that was sending, sending them. Um, I think it's just a, a, a law of, of, of the war uh, or in you know, cultures and civilizations for years that you don't, you don't hurt the messenger, right? You've heard that saying, don't shoot the messenger, right? Because um, it's been like a universal law that's existed. You, know, you, don't, you, don't, you don't do anything to the messenger. Um, you let them gum, come and you let them go and return you know, your response. But these guys, they killed the messengers. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a very defiant and offensive um, um, statement that they made. We not only not want to go to your, <laughs> to your wedding, we don't care, we have no interest. Our business, our field is more important. But you know what? We, we really dislike you. Wow. We, we, we really hate you. And the way we're going to show you is that we're going to kill your messengers. So they killed them. What happened? So the king, you know, obviously gets word of this. And he becomes furious, destroys the murderers, and he burns down their cities. Wow. That was the reaction. He just destroyed them, pretty much wiped them off the map. It was map. It was a very powerful king, obviously. You know. So, 
what does he do? The banquet is ready. He opens the invitation to everyone. He tells another group of messengers, just go out to the streets and start inviting anyone you see. Just let them come in. Let them come in. I mean, that, that would be wonderful, right? <laughs> uh, I can imagine, you know, like me walking down the street and all of a sudden, hey, you, you want to come to uh, to a banquet here at the palace? You know, um, you know, this is what we got uh, for dinner, you know, here. Yeah, of course. You know, I would immediately go home and, and change and put on my, you know, my best outfit and just walk in and perhaps a once in a lifetime opportunity that many people probably would have never received you know so it says here that the invitation was open to everyone everyone was invited good and bad and the banquet hall was filled and obviously you know it concludes on a, on a very very sad note it begins to on, on a violent note <laughs> Or, or, or backtracking a little bit more, actually. It begins as a good thing. It's a wedding banquet. It's something wonderful. And then it goes violent. <laughs> and then uh, it becomes something that, that, that is good and happy because everyone's invited. And wow, it's such a wonderful experience. But then it concludes with uh, a very sad note also. There was somebody who managed to get into the banquet hall, but they weren't dressed appropriately. He must have um, snuck in, or perhaps the uh, the guards at the fr at the front door, you know, didn't realize, you know, that, that that he was dressed inappropriately because there was no way they were going to let anyone in dressed inappropriately, and that's where he found himself. And the king said, well, "How did you get in here?" And the king was very nice because he said, "Friend, how did you get in here, my friend?" Mm. You know, he was speechless. He didn't have an answer. You know, so that gives us the impression that. Uh, he was he he did that intentionally he he did not go you know prepared intentionally and you know he was sent out he was tied down and he was thrown out into the darkness he was not allowed this message of this parable elisa i believe that it speaks to us in three different perspectives and um you know i, I find this fascinating uh in this parable that jesus is speaking here i think it's just wonderful it, it speaks in three different perspectives. The first one is the his historical perspective. Uh, I think it's just the word of God that has the ability to, to reach such amazing teachings. You know, first this parable speaks in historical context, in a current context, and in a prophetic context. You know, it has a message that fits in every single stage of those three contexts. So first of all, historical, why? the rejection of God's messengers. In the previous parable, we find the same thing. You know, that the messengers were killed, that the messengers were re were rejected. Um, the previous parable talked about, you know, the, 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 the Lord, the landowner, sending his own son. They killed him also. You know, so the messengers were mistreated, the messengers were killed. What is it talking about? It's talking about the Old Testament prophets. You know, God wanted to speak to his people through the, through the prophets. Time after time, messengers were sent by God and they would reject the word. They would kill, they would, they would kill them, they would destroy them. The rejection, uh, another thing, they would, the rejection of the message of repentance by John the Baptist. Remember, this is how this whole conversation began. These three parables began because of that conversation. John the Baptist you know, who, who was he and what was his message, mm. you know. So they rejected the message of repentance by John the Baptist. And in the Old Testament, we find the consequence for disobeying God's word, God's will, was the falling into the hands of their enemies. You know, that was the consequence of the disobedience. Time after time after time. One of the books of the Old Testament that fascinates me so much um, is the book of Judges. It's, it's, it's just incredible. It's just incredible how God sent so many men and women, you know, uh, the judges to, to help guide the people, to be that voice of God. But time after time, they would do what was wrong in the eyes of the Lord, you know. And the book concludes with the, with the phrase that says, and everyone did what they wanted. Whatever they thought was good in their eyes, that's what they did you know wow you know um, how many times has God spoken to us <laughs> you know so many times I you know I 
I remember you sharing you know, a little bit of your story. You, you started going to church when you were five years old. Um, you've heard a lot of preachings. Yeah. <laughs> you've heard a lot of yeah. messages. You've heard a lot of pastors. You know, I, I grew up, I was born into a Christian family. Mm -hmm. My dad's a pastor. I've heard a lot of preachings in my life. You know, I've heard a lot of pastors. You know, how many times has God, has God spoken to us? You know, how many times has he continued to, to, to call our attention, to guide us, to, to make us, you know, walk according to, to his will, you know, according to his word, but we drift away. Yeah. You know, we go, we follow our own desires. We follow our own, um, you know, our, our sinful nature, yeah. you know, and what happens? We fall into consequences. Yeah. And I think right now is such a good time, such a good time for, for us to reflect, you know. I'm not sitting at church. You might ask yourself, uh, tell yourself, I'm not sitting at church hearing, hearing the pastor, you know. But all those words that we've heard in the past, and I think the Spirit of God is, is speaking to our lives, is reminding us of everything that we learn. So that's the first uh, context, the first perspective for this parable. The second one is the current context. Hmm. You know, the invitation, you know, that Jesus is talking about here in this parable to the wedding is initially presented to the people of Israel, you know, to his people, to the Jews. Uh, John chapter 1 verse 11 through 12 talks about that he came to his own. Right? He came to his own because of the promise he had made to Abraham. You know, that wonderful promise. Uh, so he came to his own since it says John 1, 2, but his own rejected him. And, but then it continues to say, but to everyone who has received him, he has given him the blessing, the opportunity to be called children of God. You know, so the invitation was set for his nation, for, for, for the Jewish people, but they rejected him. They rejected the invitation, you know. So what happened? The, re the invitation was then open to everyone else. And that's where us Central Americans fall, <laughs> fall into, you know, uh, we're the Gentiles, we're non-Jews, yes. you know, and the invitation has now been sent to us, that is the parable, you know, the, in the current context, the message of that parable in its current context is that salvation is for everyone, you know, salvation is for, for anyone who believes and has faith in Jesus Christ, and he continues to invite everyone to the banquet. And what does that banquet represent? It represents a relationship with God. Communion with God. He continues to invite people. You know, Revelation 3.20 says, I am, I stand at the door. I stand at the door and I knock. You know, if anyone opens the door, I will come in and I will, what? I will dine with him. I will eat. I will sit at the table with him. What, is, what does that represent? A relationship, mm -hmm. communion. You know, there's something very meaningful about sitting at the table and, and you know, and enjoying a meal with someone. It, it's, it's very special, yeah. you know. Uh, it's something that we're probably doing a lot more with family now, <laughs> um, you know, which is very, very awesome. It's wonderful to have dinner with your family. And, uh, you know, when I want to have a conversation with someone, with a friend, uh, you know, hey, let's let's go out to eat. It's very meaningful. It's a very meaningful time, and uh, you know, God is inviting, inviting. He continues to invite us to a relationship with Him. You know what else is to say? That repentance is necessary to enter. How how, how does that apply? Well, what was that man wearing? The one that snuck in. He wasn't wearing uh, the the appropriate wedding wedding clothing, right? And what does that talk about? You know, we have a great deal of, of biblical uh, teaching regarding um, our, our, um, our clothing, our spiritual clothing. And one of them is found in Ephesians uh, chapter 4, where it says, um, where, where the Word of God encourages us to put off our old selves, right? And what, what does our old self look like? Well, I mean, it's, it's uh, corrupted by its deceitful desires, you know, it is, it is, uh, you know, sinful, it is filthy, it is uh, smelly, it's bad. It's, it's our old way of living, you know, just the, the, the sinful nature that we all carry. And then it says to 
put on your new self. Verse 24 of Ephesians chapter 4, 24 says, and put on your new self, which is um, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. You know, this is the clothing that, that God is telling us to, to wear, you know, that we need to have um, to, to have this, this experience of a relationship with him, you know, to, to, to put off that sinful nature. And, and, and what is the one thing that leads us to do that, to, to make that change? It's repentance. Mm -hmm. Repentance, repentance. That was the message of John the Baptist. Repent and be baptized. Repent. And what does repentance mean? Repentance that is a three-way process. First, acknowledging mm -hmm. that you have made a mistake, acknowledging your sinful condition. Secondly, asking for forgiveness, mm -hmm. you know, seeking pardon from God. And third, and most importantly, is turning away from it mm -hmm. and going in the opposite direction. Right. That is repentance, a complete transformation, a, a changing of lifestyle. And this is what it means by, by taking off your old self and, and putting on your, your new self, you know, um, which is true righteousness, the righteousness that we find in Jesus Christ, and holiness. You know, that is what he is talking about right there. And the last context that we find this teaching of, of Jesus Christ in this parable is a prophetic, a prophetic context, is a prophetic message. Elisa, there, there is a great banquet that we are all waiting for. We are expecting that wonderful time, that moment where we will all be in the presence of God. And, you know, uh, Revelations chapter 19, verse 7 and 9 talks about that. And it says, let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready fine linen bright and clean was was given to her to wear fine linen stands for righteous acts and god's holy people you know uh and then it continues saying then the angel said to me write this blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the lamb Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. You see the, the prophetic, you know, um, context or, right. or, or image that we find in the parable? There is a wedding banquet. There is a, a, an, an amazing event that is to come. And we find that in the book of Revelations, you know, that, that we have been invited to come. But again, you know, it is requiring us, it's describing there that, you know, that the clothing makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. You know, what we wear makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And it says that, you know, that the, that the bride, was, which is the church, and the lamb, which is Jesus Christ, uh, you know, will come to, to that wedding, which means that perfect unity that we are expecting when we go to the presence of the Lord, you know. But the characteristics of, of the, the clothing is that it'll be fine linen, the highest quality, perfection, bright, so white, so pure that it shines and clean, means without contamination. The question is, this, 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 uh, this work that we have received of being justified by God is it by our works? Is it because of something that we have done? Is it by our deeds? Hmm. You know, it says here uh, to take off the old self and put on our new self. You know, uh, is, it, is it something that we have received? Uh, is something that, that is it's by our acts that we are justified? The answer is no. No, because no, no, no deed, no act of, of a human being, of a person you know, can receive is, is, is makes, makes them, makes him or her worthy of receiving that justification. It is only through faith in Jesus Christ. That is the justification. Only through faith in Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 3 um, is, is a wonderful, wonderful uh, um, chapter about the justification that, that we receive in Jesus Christ. 
And, uh, you know, I'm amazed that at what it says here when verse 10 and, and 11 and on, it talks about, um, you know, the, the righteousness of man. It says, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. No one is righteous. You know, it doesn't matter how good we think we are. It doesn't matter what deeds we have done. It doesn't matter if we compare ourselves to other people because that's usually what we do to justify ourselves. Justification, self-justification comes by comparison, right? Like, well, I'm not as bad as that person. Oh, well, I don't do the things that he does or that she does. You know, that is self-justification. And the Word of God says there is not one righteous person there is no one who understands there is there is no one who seeks god by our own nature uh, uh we don't seek god it is not in us to to oh i want to i want to be holy <laughs> i want to be like christ oh i want to be good no on the contrary it says all have turned the way they have all become worthless there is no one who is good, not even one. Not even one. In verse 21, it says, But now apart from the law of righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify, this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and far, fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. And how did this happen? God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of His blood to be received by faith. Wow. That is the only way we can be justified. That is the only way that we are able to be part of this banquet. It's the only way that we are capable of entering into this wonderful blessing that we have in Jesus Christ. So in conclusion, I think that during this time of um, reflection, during this time of uh, self-analyzing, <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think many of us have, have realized how fragile life is. You know, um, when we look at the numbers of how many people are being affected by this virus and, and the sad numbers of how many people have lost their lives mm -hmm. due to this worldwide virus, it is, um, it is it's real. It's real. The, the fact is real that, that life is very fragile. Another thing that we're seeing is how easily things can change and how dramatically things can change from one day to another from one week to another things change you know when all of this was developing we, we were realizing that uh, you know things were changing by the hour okay. news were changing by the hour guidelines were changing by by the hour uh, you know most of us would wake up in the following morning to see okay well what can't I do today or, or what has changed or what new regulations stand you know things can change very fast things can change dramatically we can see how our security the things that we have placed our security in can suddenly become an insecurity you know like finances our bank accounts our our, our assets you know, things that we found safety and security, all of a sudden are threatened. All of a sudden are, are no longer there. They're no longer there to make us feel safe. Another thing that this is making us realize is that we can be here safe and secure one day, but we don't know about tomorrow. We are not sure what tomorrow may bring will we be here mm -hmm. you know and the question is are you ready for your encounter with the creator you know when your time comes when my time comes will I be ready for that encounter with my creator will your deeds 
justify you before the great judge. You know, well, you'll be able to say, well, I was not too bad. <laughs> but again, the only thing that can ju justify you, only faith in Jesus will grant you that justification, will grant you salvation and eternal life in heaven. So I encourage you, my friend, who are listening, my brother, my sister, think about these things. You know, and if you haven't yet, I invite you to receive this gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, through faith in Jesus Christ alone. Let me pray with you this morning. Heavenly Father, in you we find peace and rest for our hearts. Only in you, Lord, do we find security. Only in you, Father, we find shelter. So, Lord, we want to take this time that our ears and our hearts and our minds would be open to what it is that you want to teach us today and during this season. Father, have we relied on our self-righteousness have we relied, Lord, on, on others to live a life before you? To, to, to walk according to, to your will? Lord, we have your word. We have your Holy Spirit that speaks to us today and every day. So, Lord, I pray. I pray that we be forever changed that this time of reset of pause will just encourage us to make changes in our lives and also Lord if there are any friends that are listening who have not yet received Jesus Christ in their lives and their hearts that today be the day of salvation that today be a day where they surrender their lives to you, Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you, my friend, that our, you've heard this message and you're hearing the good news of justification and salvation to Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, to open up your heart, to repeat a simple prayer with me, to say this prayer to the Lord, and to believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is the only way to justification and salvation. Just repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I thank you so much for your wonderful sacrifice on the cross. It was enough. It was sufficient. It was perfect for the justification of all mankind. Today I receive that gift. Today I receive salvation through faith in you alone. Forgive me from all my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may walk a life that will bring glory and honor to your name. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much again for joining us this morning for today's service. Um, I really miss you. <laughs> um, I, you know... Um, Look forward to calling most of you or many of you this week. Again, you will receive phone calls from our ministry leaders that are, you know, um, with that heart to connect also. They will be reaching out to you sometime this week. We will be reaching out to some sometime this week. And feel free to share any prayer requests. Feel free to share any concerns. And uh, we will be more than happy to, to pray with you and to um, share any resources that we may have, um, like the ones that Elisa mentioned earlier. Uh, if you want to continue chatting uh, with one of our ministry leaders, go ahead and, and click on that prayer tab that's there on the screen or the chat tab, and, and we will continue having a discussion with you. I will be on, uh, on the chat room shortly, so you can connect with me also if you want to have any conversations with me. And also at the top of the screen, you will find some links. There's a link 
that takes you directly to our Facebook page if you want to visit there and, and see the other things that we are doing during this, uh, this interesting time. Uh, if you want to see our, our Instagram page, there's also a link up there where you can just push and um, it'll take you directly to, uh, to our Instagram page. And also, there's a link there uh, to make a donation. Um, I want to thank those of you who have been so faithful, even during this time of hardship, um, you know, giving your donations to the church, your offerings and your tithings. Um, you know, we continue to uh, trust in God that he will be the one that carries us through this difficult season. So if you feel in your heart um, to make a special donation or an offering or present your tithes to the Lord, you can just click on that link up there on your screen to make that happen. Again, Elisa, thank you for joining us today. And um, we continue to look forward to seeing the things that God is doing through, through your life. Praise God. God bless you, everyone, and we will see you soon. <laughs>